Personally, I find fame confusing now it's such a growth industry. Increasingly, whatever you read, wherever you look, your attention is focused on celebrity. But we rarely get to see the real person until there's a crisis. There's trouble in Spice World this lunchtime. It's being claimed that Jerry Halliwell, or Ginger Spice, has left the group. So where is Ginger Spice? Did Jerry Halliwell jump or was she pushed? Ginger Spice is missing. But is she planning to go solo or is she simply off colour? Scary baby posh and sporty really want right now is to find Ginger, who's gone missing from the spice rack. Today is Thursday the 28th of May. I'm in Paris and um, yesterday I left the Spice Girls permanently. Um, I thought it'd be really good to basically record you know, life after, right from the beginning, um, to see you know what basically happened. Um, so I'm in Paris um, with my brother, um, basically trying to hide from the media. Jerry Halliwell is seen as the strongest willed of the band. At 25, she's the oldest. Past jobs include being a model and a Turkish television game show hostess. As a Spice Girl, she's worth over 13 million pounds. Hi, um, today is Friday, I can't remember, 29th of May. It's actually Melanie Brown's birthday, ironically. Um, Today I'm feeling really, really anxious and loads of mixed feelings. Um, I don't really know what to think today. I feel quite nervous what the outcome is going to be. This is how Jerry Halliwell told the world through her solicitor of her decision to leave the Spice Girls. I have no immediate plans. I wish to apologise to all the fans. She's sort, she's sort of letting the whole country down. My favourite Spice Girls. I don't, don't know if she's going to ever come back sort of thing. I just hope, please, please, you know, I just hope I deserve something good out of this. Okay. Okay, stopping now. Bye. It was around this time Jerry called me. She wanted someone to take over her film. She was still a tax exile here in Paris, so I came to meet her in her hotel where she was hiding from the media. The paparazzi actually have gone, but they were down there and they had no idea that I was... They know I'm in the hotel, but hopefully they don't know I'm here. But the funny thing is, I'm up on here. And oh I, God, so yeah, and I, and I was thinking, can you imagine if they got a shot of me? They'd think I was committing suicide. <laughs> that would make the... That would sell a few papers, wouldn't it? That'd probably be... The whole fame thing is a real test, and money is such a test of character, it really is. And the irony of it all is that I would say I was the biggest wannabe. I was the biggest wannabe out of everybody. I wanted fame, fortune so badly, I would have done anything. See, this lifestyle brings out the best and worst in everybody. It sort of accelerates, you know, your extremes of personalities. That's what I, you know, and it's so easy to get lost, it's so easy to, you know, to, to not keep your feet on the ground, basically. I'd only just got there and we were off. You have to take the other gate. Life had to be conducted at this speed. Not only was she a tax exile, but she was also on the run from the media, who now had money on her head for anyone who spotted and snapped her. This way. Natural spice. Can you show it? Says natural spice. Oh my god, you look like Fergie. Don't say that. Do I? Someone see you. Be careful. Come and ask for an autograph if you do that. No, you look really great because there's a lot of you know. It's the character that shines out when you see a girl that like, I'm talking as a man. Like, 
when you see this bit, I mean, this looks fantastic too because that's fun and as they say, full war paint and all this kind of stuff. But this, when you look at a girl like that, I mean, A, you look really pretty, but B, you know, your character really shines out. Have a seat. Sign the shirt. Big, big, big writing. Okay. Big writing. That's so fun. There you go. It's fantastic. I was becoming intrigued by the situation. I should have realised there'd be complications, though. Jerry got on the phone to her lawyer to tell him that I was taking over her film. No, just be natural. I've got complete control on it and it'll be edited if there's anything, you know, bad in it or, you know, then when it's really serious, we just kind of leave the room. Okay? Uh, Sorry, but I was just listening to you then and what you just said to him about this film being totally in your control. And I'm sitting here thinking, no, it's not. It is, though. See, if I don't like it. But I'm not going to spend months following you round for then you on a whim to say, no, I don't like it. You see what I mean? That's what I meant. You either hand over a bit to me, or I can't do it. Yeah. I'm not that egotistical. I think, well, you know, this is just about me. But then on the other hand, as, you know, my managing myself, this has, to a degree, you know, of course I don't... What's the point of making a film to destroy my public image? Do you know what I mean? That's... that's... That's stupid. But then I'm, tr I'm sort of being trusting enough on my instinct to say, well, hold on, Jerry, you'll just be yourself. And hopefully, exactly. you know, if I'm just myself anyway, I'm not a horrible person. So hopefully, you know, people, you know, I'm daring to bear. I'm daring to do it. I'm daring to go there, trying to go there as best as I can. Yeah, but what a lot of people will question is why? Is it that why? you're an egomaniac? Or that you can't live without a camera. Why does there have to be a bad motive? Because it's very unusual, I suppose. What are the good motives behind it then? I think from a creative point of view, I can see this as interesting, even if it was just a narcissistic pop star sitting here. Too much of something is bad Everything that was ginger is to be auctioned at Sotheby's for a children's cancer charity. Tonight, the public are allowed a final glimpse. question. Why does it make you cry? Why do you care so much? Oh, I just, I just remember all the good things they've done. You remember what? Like the good stuff they've done. Yeah. Oh, You've never met her then? No. Don't you think all this stuff is just an image? It's not really her. She's still alive. Yeah, I know, but this was like mostly her. It's like how the world knows her. Ginger is kind of a character that I based on, you know, my wild child days, really. I just brought her to life in my 20s. And it's kind of putting that to bed. bed I can, you know, I could never go back there again. That's it. Open and close book of that chapter. So where do you go? Um, do you create a new person? I mean, it's just, I don't know, create, because then that, that doesn't make, because then it sounds like Ginger was created, but she just, she, that was who I was. I just evolved into someone different.
I think it's like any divorce. You go through all different stages. First of all, being really angry. And then, then you go through the sad period. Does it make you feel like you shouldn't have made the move to go? Or are you now... No, no. You out? Oh, I was totally... I was totally, you know, put in a situation where I couldn't stay. I had no choice. I had no choice. Absolutely no choice. Do you think they wanted you out? Yes. One particular moment did. It seemed to me Jerry had been unhappy as a Spice Girl for a long time and had actually handed in her notice months before. But what had caused her to leave so suddenly at the time she did appeared to be a big disagreement over her doing a solo interview on breast cancer. Can give you a welcome? That proved to be the final straw. Hi. So they know you can't talk, they know, and obviously you can't talk about your past and you can't talk about your future. It's about simply the sale. Cool. Uh, are you happy now that you're no longer a Spice Girl? That was one thing that, are you don't happy now? Don't read it, don't read it, don't read it. Tell me, how, what's your answer? Um, what say? Are you happy now? Because I need to then go over a few I think I'd you. be wise about it. I'd say, you, I'd say, are you happy with, you probably, you know, in love, got everything you want. Can you say you're genuinely happy? What is happiness? Ooh, I'm just getting deep, hang on. You know, I'll just yeah, get no, deep on them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I say, I, that's, a very, that's a very hard question yeah. to answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you have to be careful about that simply because if you even infer that you are either oh. way happier now oh. than you were then or happier oh. then than you are now, no, it's good. you're scuffed. Do <laughs> we have a sky? Yeah, yeah. Right, so there's only room for one BBC crew. I've got two BBC crews in the front row. I've had BBC here since about 8 o'clock. BBC, I've got another crew here. Do you want to argue? I'm just nervous. I don't know what it is. I have anxiety in the past few days. Being in the my instigation I suppose you know I feel vulnerable I'm not the same person as I was when I don't know two years ago and how I handled media it's just getting back in the swing of it I just I don't know how my personality now is going to react I really regret my tattoos now well I wish I'd listened to my mother why do you regret them? because I I just think they look really cheap. Do it from the top, go over from the top. Or I'll do it. That's it. Okay. Okay, earrings with jewelry. And what I'm going to put on is this is little Guardian Age on. This is just like, I'll put it on the inside anywhere just to know I'm wearing it. What is it? Little, I don't know why. I always wear it and it always seems to work out fine. A little Guardian Angel. A fan. They can always get sent them. It's almost it's lucky. So that'd be hidden, Mark. Okay. Well, fame's such an industry now, isn't it? The point was made that, say, maybe in the 40s or 50s, there were less famous people than there are now. I think that's true. There is so much television around, so much media, so many magazines, so much money that more and more people are simply becoming famous, but they're becoming famous for shorter periods of time. I can take 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950, 1,000, it's She has been famous for a very short period of time. Her fame has sort of been stratospheric and it's gone up very, very quickly. And I think that people are interested to see what happens to her. I think everybody is quite interested to see what talent she's got and why should she necessarily deserve to uh, be a celebrity, to be in the public eye, to enjoy all the, um, the trappings that that, is, that bestows if she hasn't actually got any talent beyond what she's already shown. Oh my God. Jerry's agreed to auction the star item herself. A Union Jack tea towel transformed by her and her sister into what has become an icon. Thank you. 
pounds with me. I am delivering it. 23,000. Yes. I so. Unfortunately, Jerry's car has been moved on and she's abandoned in Bond Street with the press. Jerry, be 15 seconds just in front of the window. Jerry, 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 go in the shop. Jerry, go in the shop. Go in the shop. Toby, can you stop looking in the shop? Jerry, Jerry. Are we going in here? <laughs> you mean they must think I'm mad? Well, unless you can take red Don't worry. Let's go. We're ready. Have you got my briefcase yeah. and my briefcase? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, you. guys, for being a shooting shop. Thank you. Just a brochure from the sales. We've got nothing on it that keeps you. Yeah, there you go. The brochure. Just here for me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel ecstatic and charged. I felt love. Buried her, finally buried her pop star image. Page 36, and it's really horrible. Well, what does it say? Will the real Jerry Halliwell please stand up? From box and British Barbie doll to power dress dreary, how Ginger went and lost all her spice. There's something very fake about Jerry Halliwell in a way that's something very sincere about Ginger Spice. To look so contrite, so hurt, so apologetic, so vulnerable, and so much like a woman spurned goes against everything we loved about Cheeky Jerry. She was that when when they called her old and fat and ugly, as they often did, would just come bouncing back with high hair and shorter skirt and more lipstick. Isn't that horrible? We return to France and to exile, where Jerry has asked her accountant to come out and see her. Okay, shall I tell you what I'm doing? Okay, so I'm putting together this fabulous book and it deals with self-esteem, self-worth, relationships, energy, mind, body and soul. You know, my life is like a lifetime speeded up into a chunk and, you know, I've had bulimia and anorexia when my father died. That's another issue I'm going to deal with that book is death. Um, when my father died, I went completely anorexic. Four, about four and a half years ago. And then, um, so I died. He died. Heart attack. He was 72. And it was horrible because it was my sister's birthday, Karen's birthday, and there was this big 40th party. I think I was doing um, a, a show in Turkey, a game show, and, um, and I thought I couldn't go. My dad didn't turn up. And, you know, everyone thought he'd forgotten or something. And so they celebrated the birthday, and then on that Monday morning, they went looking for him and knocked on his flat door, and his flat was a pigsty. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, Steptoe and Son, you know, oh. used to go to jumble sales and stuff like that. And, um, and they found him naked with the present next to him, dead. And then I went to see him, and it was the most horrible thing. Seeing someone, this is my vision of my father dead. It was like he was in the, I mean, I giggle about it. It's kind of, he was lying there and he's, all his nails were black and everything was black and everything was sunk. And he looked like the penguin in um, Batman 2. 
Why did really... you think I broke them? I don't know. And I the blood and it was horrible, this horrible memory I had of my father. So I thought, hideous. I was too depressed and late, kind of brought down to even commit suicide. I wanted to kill myself. What, what sort of feeling do you get? Do you actually go through the whole motion of how you do it? Or no, or did you just, I I just don't want to go on, basically? No, I just couldn't function. It was awful. I was becoming more and more surprised by Jerry and by some of her plans for the future. She was writing to an extraordinary array of people to ask for their advice and support. Maybe you can help me, Molly. Dear Charles, who is this to and why? This is Prince Charles. So, dear Charles, hello. Hope you're fine. Hope you're okay. Hope you're fine, I hope you're okay. What do you think, Molly? I think you've got to write it as you would write no, it. No, I need your help, please. Why do you need my help? You should because write it. Because I don't it. think I'm good enough to write yes, it. Yes, you are. I don't think it's the best circumstance for you to be sitting writing, trying to concentrate when you're hot and getting hot and bothered. Please, I need you. You're the right calibre to deal with such matters to, so he doesn't look at this and think, what a common. No, I, just, I don't think I should get any involved. No, but I want you to. Just film that, or with one hand, but give me your brain. You don't need your brain to, the minute while you're filming, do you? <laughs> I think oh, so that's really probably the end of my career. <laughs> the oh, arguments so continued. The location changed. Her final retreat was at George Michael's villa in the south of France. You are of my world. People become my friends. Like Charles Bradbrook, my accountant, is my mate. He has been more than an accountant. That is my relationship with people. Maybe it's, I'm a sad f but that's my mates are, but that is the way I am. Where are your mates who are not professionally? They're in Watford, I've got a few. They're just not, you know, they can't be with me at the minute because they've got their own lives. I've asked them to come out, but they never can come. Does it get lonely? Yeah, so lonely. When I left, Watford the other day, I was just gutted. It was horrible. It really, really emphasised the difference. The difference between just the life that I leave and the life that they leave. And... Ali, stop. That night, we tried to go out to dinner. Oh, just forget it. I'm just getting in my car. The idea was to celebrate tomorrow's return to England, but unfortunately, a local photographer had been tipped off. See, I've been he's telling you anyway, he's going to get pictures of my face. Yeah, but then he's got you. Well, then I just film him. Merci, monsieur. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I fell over in front of the paparazzi. I was ecstatic when I first I arrived. Like no, the minute you you phoned me up, yeah. being late, I just got all stressed. You did, didn't you? And I was on time. In fact, I was early. She's always like this to me. I'm not. You haven't told me who the driver is. This is my brother, Max. It's changed the mind every five seconds, and then if you get it wrong, it's your fault. I'm <laughs> employing him because then my driver costs so much. So Max says he's going to do it really cheap to save me money. Why do you feel a bit weird helping your sister? No, because then once she's no, in... No, what are you doing? Go straight on. Oh, yeah, on. sorry. Once she's in, what? Once she's in, I'll just punch her. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jerry's brother who found her the little cottage she's been renting for the last couple of years, hidden at the back of this dairy farm in Hertfordshire. I wonder if you see Duncan and he's gorgeous. Well, I like him. Hiya! Hello. I'm back. You're back in now, are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm back. Is Jimmy around? Where's Jimmy? Jimmy, he's out a minute. Is he? Mm. Mum! Hi! I'm back! Hello! Jerry's mother, who's Spanish, has come for the day to clean. I'm back for good. I've come to live properly now. Yeah. She's only just reluctantly allowed Jerry to buy her retirement from her job at the local shopping centre, where she was supervising all the cleaners. Oh dear, dear. <gasps> oh my God! <laughs> just, just another letter from Charles. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. 
that handwritten again. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, I've got another letter from Char Prince Charles. Another one. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. I think it's nice too. Come on. I bless you for writing, and I was most intrigued. To pee with you. It's all about the charities I wrote. Yeah. Oh, no, I have asked my. Before he got the letter that she sent to him, we got one from we got one from him. That oh, makes so sense. What? Just saying. Oh, it's so sad to hear you've left the Spice Girls and all this kind of stuff. If you see these people, let me know how you get up. I feel a real proud having those stuck on my wall and you're filming them at a time, and I put them up there when I was feeling differently. <laughs> oh. Congrats to Jerry, the sexiest female. That was the, the highlight in my career. <laughs> anyway, so, um, share it with Natalie now. Oh, this is my dad. Oh, that's sick. God, he looks nice. When did he die again? Um, about five years ago. He wasn't completely lovely, but he was sweet in his old age. So I think I, do you know what I used to do in the back of this? I used to write my. Did I tell you about cosmic shopping lists? No. I'm sure I did. You know, Louise Haybook about. Um, have you not heard? I can heal your life, Louise Haybook. Well, anyway, basically it says that. If you want anything in life, what you do is you're sending it out into the universe and you, you write everything in the present. Suppose you want, I don't know, a number one uh, hit record or you want, um, I don't know, a new house and you want a nice boyfriend or a husband or you want your family to be healthy and happy. You say, my family is healthy and happy. My, I have a, um, a lovely wife. I, you know, anything. And I did this and I put it in the back of this. And should I do? And do you know what? And also, I put on my back of my shopping list. I forgot. But George Michael is my husband, or or George. Michael, and I realised he was gay. And then, because I've always fancied when I was a little girl, and I, you know, now he's my friend instead. Look, I am happy, confident, content with myself. I feel love, security, and oneness with everything, especially myself. All my dreams and inspirations fulfilled. I'm creative, energised. It is re Oh my God. When did you put that list in? This was oh my god! I don't know, and I this I just do them every now and then. Oh look! I find love and friendship with George. I am admired and respected by the whole world. Yeah, but is that a bit presumptuous? No, because oh, it's your wish. But everybody wants respect, don't they? Or just to be? God, I feel really embarrassed. I never put a joke to be famous. See, that is coming from her. The opposite. I did the stopping yeah, up. I did the reversing. Do you understand? I just hate it. Because always, I just come to tell you an incident, right? Half father, without my permission, right? Half father, without my permission, Molly, she took to, um, to an agency. I don't know what agency. You know this talented children's agency, right? And um, when well, she was how old? Eight. I went crazy. I need to come back. Actually, I freak out, right? Really freak out. I, I went for his head, right? Why did he take her? Well, it's a long story. You know, some parents are very pussy. But they see, you know, nah. You know what I'm saying? They see they're using the children for money. They could see money there, you know, investment. And you saw that, right? I, I could see it, but I see a child. You need to be a child first. If you're talent, you will catch up later. So always actually try to stop it now. I do the opposite all the time. All the time stop her. So when you are older, you, you know, you could do what you wanted. She did. It was like reverse psychology. <laughs> right? So she took like a volcano. Okay, this is photos. These scrapbooks and photographs have been carefully kept since childhood. And for her autobiography, Jerry's chosen an Australian to edit her diaries to give it an international feel. This is the ticket of Hamlet. So that's on the day your dad was buried? No, the day the dad died. two days after my dad died. Two days after he died. That's my dad there. Um, you know the actually, camera club? Yeah. Well, that's one of the first pictures. I was 16. 
Kind of like a baby dressed up in just a little camera club. Awful there, then. That's one of the first the pictures first ever taken of me. First yeah, in the cement Spain. factory in cement. Cement factory? No, he thought this, he thought it was arty. It look at that's so quite nice. Well. And these are all kind of... Oh, look, that's for my first shoot as well. That's horrible, look. Isn't that a classic, you know, wrap up, wrap up warm with Jerry. <laughs> this is the one that I sent to Beverly Goodway. Of Patreon, and then he wanted to shoot me. Like, hi, look at my boot. You're so lucky to have a set. As she says, um, oh, so much rejection what? in terms of uh, her attempts to actually make it. Oh, For really? years and years and years, where she got uh, nearly jobs, she almost jobs, she nearly oh, got jobs presenting television, she nearly won sort of modelling contracts, oh, she, no. all those right. sorts of things and well. each time, uh, I mean she had so much rejection, well, most people would have given up, they would have basically yeah. um, given up in a flood of tears Lovely. and walked away and settled down, but she Hello. was so desperate to be famous, <laughs> so desperate to make it, she persevered and is the first to admit that um, she didn't have the strongest voice in the Spice Girls, she wasn't the best dancer. But she was the motivator that drove them onwards when no one believed in them. Fans began arriving mid-afternoon for this, the last date on the Spice Girls World Tour. It could be in for a surprise too. Not only will they get to see baby, scary, posh and sporty, but former Ginger Spice Jerry Halliwell is rumoured to be putting in an appearance on stage later. Please, yes, please. Come on, we were Jerry, yeah. Jerry, come back. <laughs> I read in a Sunday Times paper in this interview and it said, it quoted um, uh, Melanie B quote, oh, we're really, we're stronger than ever since Jerry's left. We don't need her anymore. And to be honest, that, that says it absolutely all, that says absolutely everything. We don't need her anymore. None of it so it seems real. I don't know what's happened and just I think what do you think? I think it's quite important to confront certain emotions. You know, it's a bit like why there's no need for a funeral when somebody's died. It's a kind of formal way of saying this is gone. And in a way, sometimes I think you spend too much time in denial saying it doesn't matter, does it matter? Yeah, I suppose of course it matters, you know. But then sometimes I question what I'm quite crying about. What are the options? What could it be? You know, sometimes I think people use sad events in their life and they're crying about something completely different. But I know I'm good at. But I know I'm good at. Baby. But, but I know I'm good. Shit. Is this getting any better? Big baby. Okay. Baby. What is it? I know what it's about. It's about low self-esteem, not feeling good enough about yourself. Ah, why don't you feel good enough about yourself? I don't know. No, just at school, you know, in school plays and things like that, I was always the bloody donkey or the shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> I was never Mary <laughs> or baby Jesus. That's what's my motivation <laughs> now. <laughs> I 
I remember when I went to girls grammar school in the first year um, the, the first years are blocked off and I was the kind of I always felt that I was the um, symbolic poor kid that was allowed in and um, I remember this English teacher, she's probably not alive anymore, and it was Mrs. Case. She said to me, Jerry, you are awfully lucky to be here. Awfully lucky among all these other girls and that obviously come from privileged backgrounds. And I just thought, I've always been told that, you know, but I think I was messing around or not learning or, you know, I've always been told you're not smart enough or you shouldn't be here or, yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, he's 16 years old now. Oh. Yeah, the old fella, aren't you? See, they're grateful, you see. You can't beat a grateful dog. You know, they're just so loyal. Grateful, right? They're best. <laughs> true, true. There you have it. First of all, at the moment, I'm writing a book. Okay, and it's like that. I've had the most funniest life. It really has trying to be getting famous. Yeah. Okay, I've had a hundred jobs. Yeah. You know, I've tried everything, and it's you know, it's gonna be a real Bridget Jonesy kind of, you know, very real and truthful. So that's the long term plan. Um, in the, the the near future, I want to do, you know, something like the Brits presenting. That'd be great. You know, to lift my profile. I would like to get the James Bond baddie. I think that'd be brilliant if I could get that, and um, uh, maybe a, sort of a, maybe a British comedy, and something else, just a few things, and really play off, you know, music with film, that kind of thing. I don't think I'm going to go into television just yet. I think that would down market me too early. I'm looking to, be, you know, do something like Oprah or Cilla Black when I'm, I'd say, about 36, because I think why would anyone want to take me ser seriously at 26? Really, but you don't. But without being, you don't. But the answer is don't box yourself in. Either. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you don't know. Now wishing to be rude, but if you're not a trained actress, how could you cope with the bomb part? Oh, blag it! Oh, it's fine. You should just pretend. That's what acting's about. Pretending. I'm always pretending. The producers of the new Bond movie are looking for a female baddie, and Jerry is going to meet them. Mommy's money, Penny. No, wrong bar. Stop it. Can you see my hairy legs on film? And my hair is falling out. Oh, no. I can do boxing and kickboxing, and I can do a European accent. Where are the diamonds, Mr. Bond? <laughs> would you go all the way to get it? What do you mean? I mean, would you take anything off? Oh, no! Oh, no! No! I've done all that. You know, when I said when I told my brother and sister I didn't get the bomb part, they went, "Oh, it doesn't matter. You get everything anyway." And I was like, oh, "Actually, that doesn't make me feel any better." And what about your mom? She, she doesn't really get it. Do you know what I mean? It, it, actually, Sharon yesterday gave me some good advice, yeah, and she said, "You know, counselor. yeah, she was being my counsellor, and she saved me ninety pounds on on <laughs> um, psychiatric help." I thought I was going to go to a stream yesterday, but she gave you a whole. Well, yeah, a plate of donuts and a plate of cookies. Yeah, she said eat them. <laughs> 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 what did Sharon say that was so good? She said, she said, you know, look, you weren't meant to get it. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. And I came to the conclusion. Mummy, you see your dog. All right, I am. She said to me that. Mummy's coming. I am my own <laughs> real life Bond girl. I am a real one. No, she's got nuts. I need some bloody philosophical guru sitting there going, you know, like in the Karate Kid, and he has a mentor. That's what I thought. And I haven't got one. But I honestly think that my theory, and I wonder what Janine thinks of this. She's got to learn to love her herself. herself. She's got to learn to like herself. Uh, and to learn uh, after. Yeah. And really, at the end of the day, she's a very lucky girl. I know, I am. Because she's, you know, she's got everything going for her. She's got no big real problems and she's got her health. I know. I've got nothing. I'd look at someone like me and go, you, you spoiled brat. Weird. 
Do you know what I mean? You don't realise how lucky you are. Yeah. You know, I just want to be happy. What's the matter with Sometimes me? Sometimes you could have lots of material things. You could be very lonely. Oh, and yeah. a simple day, a simple life, like, you know, like you, Jenny, you have your child yeah, and all that. That's what I'm Who am I discussing? Me, like, I'm so bloody important. Maybe. Was she like this with the Spice Girls? Yeah. yeah. But then, worse. But, uh, yeah. She's worse. She was worse when she was with them. Oh, yeah. Definitely, she was away as well, she couldn't see us, you know, a lot of the time she was in a hotel room in America with like a big fridge full of food and she'd just be sitting there digging out and ringing us up, you know, in a state. Yeah, I think it's the loneliness that... stuck in these flipping hotels, this is yeah. what I think is, yeah. I just think they're just, they're just living in like a different world, it's just not reality, is it? You've got everyone doing everything for you and all these parties with these show busy people it's not nice everyone wants to be talking to the person that's most in at the time oh yeah you know and it's just it's not real they're not yeah. true friends and you know it's just i don't but what's real life then well yeah i suppose that to them is real life isn't it you I mean, know real what? life is just like you know normal every day Having a kid, getting married, having children, getting your house, and that's all you work for. And you, you know, we do work really hard just to get, you know, your drive done or you have an extension. And how's Jerry's life different to that? I think it's just that, um, she's got no, um, not a very good social life, I don't think, at the minute, have you? <laughs> The United Nations Agency responsible for sexual and reproductive health want Jerry to be their goodwill ambassador. I have to tell you this, okay. My mother is Spanish. She comes from, you know, a little tiny village, okay, and she's never going, oh, why can't you just be a teacher? Me. For the first time in my life, my mother is proud of me when I told her this. I feel so, you don't realise, this is one of the happiest days of my life. It really, really is. I am so excited. I'm so flattered that you asked me. I was kind of like, why me? How did you, why, what made you pick me? We've been watching the media, obviously, as part yeah. of our, our role to watch the media over yeah. the last... Um, four or five months and we felt we needed somebody with a, a very high profile to help us um, with uh, an affinity for the issues and um, if you'll pardon me harking back to, to previous times you, yeah. you, you were the, the founder of the words the, the girl power because that basically fundamentally is what the whole issue yeah. is about it's about the empowerment of women, women. and particularly and young, young women, women. We're calling the project Six Billion and One, basically because next year on the 15th of June, 16th of June, I keep saying the 15th, the six billionth person will be born in the world. It's, oh that's obviously a date. It's, 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 it's been designated, we don't know. It's estimated by the UN that some 350 million couples around the world want to exercise their right to control their fertility but are unable to do so. The average person doesn't have a clue right, what's yeah. going on. They read the, you know, they read the sun, they don't really know what's going on in Afghanistan or Uganda. They've got no idea. But then they, they can't, be, it's too much for them to pick up, you know, the times or things like that to digest. I think what I've got is to be able to, to, to transcend it in a very digestible manner. Get it over to them. Yeah, that's all, that's the only thing I think but, I can but offer. You, so we'd be very happy if you're prepared to be quite frank and outspoken, as you yeah. said, you like to be. You know, everything's going right. But then, you know, and I was thinking, oh, maybe I haven't got any friends. Is that what it is? You know, and I have got some really nice friends, you know, about, about three, four, I don't know. You know, and my sister's there and Alistair's there and it's great and whatever. But I just got this massive, you know, I don't, I don't mind working hard all week. But at the weekend, I think, oh, it's kind of this anti-climax of the weekend that happens to me. Because I know there's nothing there. Do you know what I mean? When the work stops, I'm like, oh. it's like that. Every weekend I start crying. <laughs> oh. Would you describe it as a void? I don't know. I think everyone's got a void to a degree. If we really sit down, it's that unconnection with whatever, with God or with the world. But then maybe I was thinking maybe it's something more simpler than that. Maybe I just want someone, some love in my life. The thing is, I can't just go and have a fickle flippant snog with someone because there's no point. Because it will get blown out of proportions, you know, with the whole media thing. Do you know what I mean? The consequences, the repercussions are just 
not even worth it. Do you know what I mean? I can't go and, you know when you have a fling, you think, oh my god, why did I do that? And you forget about it. You get a real, why did I do that? Do you know what I mean? So it's just like, oh, I'm not even going to go there. It's not even worth it. So I really feel really lonely. Jerry is going to the United Nations headquarters in New York to be briefed about her new job. But the story has been leaked to the press. Jerry, Jerry. Just say why you've decided to take this job on over the UN. What, and what it means to you. I just want to picture this for the Times newspaper, okay? It's a nice story. No, it's in the okay, Times newspaper. It's one, one nice bit. Jerry, okay, please, for the Times. So we've want... done it for the Times already. Go through. Jerry. Excuse me, can you go? Thank you. They're just waiting for me to do something really odd, do you know what I mean? Lift a bag and... Well, I want to slip or something. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You know the head UN guy, what's his name? Koli Anan. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, they think that I'm meeting him and... Kofi Anan, that's it. Hi, Jerry. We're from GMTV. I'm with us. Hello, Jerry. Jerry, tell us about your plans in New York for the UNFPA, would you? Can you talk about the UNFPA? Looking forward to being an ambassador. Do you think of it as an audience? How long are you going to be here? Jerry. Not Jerry. 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 Oh, man. What a rip. I'm so excited and happy. Yeah, I feel almost tearful because it's just so brilliant. I'm here doing something I so want to do. It's so brilliant. It's like, God. It's not every day you feel this happy, is it? No. That you really think, God, everything is going my way. Uh-oh, what's gonna go? No, I'm going to feel comfortable with this happiness. Life can always be like this. It could have been all so different. I knew this guy, his name was Ronnie, and um, he wanted me to sing with him in curry houses, singing Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> I've got a job. <laughs> Do you know, it gives you, people are unemployed, you, you get low self-esteem. And I suppose, I feel like I've got a job and it's, you know, it does give you life meaning. This is going to give my life meaning. It so is. <laughs> what are you most nervous about today? I suppose, to be honest, I am unconfident and I'm, sh I'm sure this is a new, I'm going into a new area you know, a new field, and it's like anything, when you start a new job, you don't know how to use a photocopier. And, you know, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about a subject that I've only just, I'm learning. So, and obviously, they're, they're very quick to criticise, ah, oh, she's just a, you know, a bimbo, blah, 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 blah. So, but I'm not. <laughs> so why are you doing it? Because to do good. And then it doesn't matter, does it? Who gives a shit whether I'm rubbish or how I speak or if I stumble over my words and you know, if I'm nervous or if everybody hates me? You know, if you just remember what you're doing it for, then you can get out of bed. Do you think sometimes if you're doing good for others, it takes the pressure off the questions you ask yourself? Yeah, absolutely. It really takes emphasis off yourself, whether you're good enough, I suppose. 
Unfortunately, the UN have called an immediate press conference for which Jerry has had no time to prepare. My main mission, my main plight. Can I use the word plight? Um, Give me another word. My main objective. My main objective. Oh, that's a too big a word. My main objective is to uh, bring awareness to reproductive, for, for the need of reproductive health care for undeveloped country, countries. Miss Halliwell, are you in favour of abortion yourself? I'm in favour of choice. I think that's a very personal decision and you can never say never. Um, I'm, I'm in favour of healthcare. So I'm in favour of... This is such a delicate situation. I, I was going to say I'm in favour of pro-choice and pro-life. Apparently pro-life is the name of a, um, a real anti-abortion activists out here. I didn't know that. So I was going to blurt it out. And then all the, all the nutty, real pro-activists would have gone, yeah, she's on our side. It's, don't you find the biggest nightmare is you're having to tread so carefully? Yeah, absolutely. All these people that could take offence. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to say, well, actually, you know, it's down to the individual woman. And I don't know what, I don't know what my opinion is. We're here, Ambassador. Ms. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador. Ms. Ambassador. Welcome to the United Nations. Oh, wow. What is it that uh, touches you more, the situation the 5.8 billion people are in regarding the illnesses, regarding other situations that you just mentioned, your trip to South Africa, or, or is it the development at all, I mean, the steady increase of the world's population that also increases their problems? I think they're all interrelated, you know, population, um, but I think the thing that inspires me the most is empowerment of women. I believe that the Western world, women have, in the last hundred years have come a long, long way. And I think women in underdeveloped countries deserve that same, you know, freedom and ability to have the right to choose. And in, uh, on, the, on the bigger scale, that's going to benefit our world as a whole. Do you think the fact you're no longer part of the group limits your ability to propagate the message of the Population Fund? Well, I think, at the end of the day, I am famous, okay? Lots of people know who I am. And I am damn well going to use my fame positively. You know, if I can bring, away, if I save one person's life just by awareness, I'm going to damn well do it. I don't care what, you know, you know whether I'm famous or enough. If just one person recognises me and thinks, well, actually, you know, I'm it's going to bring attention, and that's good enough for me. The United States owes a lot of money to the United Nations, over a billion dollars. Yes. And one of the reasons is there's a controversy right now over population-related issues, yes. reproductive issues, and that's yes. kind of a controversy. How do you feel about that, and what do you think the United States government should do? You know, there is a lot. The world, there's a lot of pressure on the world as we have it. And, I mean, that's a field that, you know, give me six months, I'll give you a better answer. So at the moment, I'm not really equipped to answer that. Yes. I mean, I, the last question is always a. It's always a Never mind. You dealt with it very well. That was superb. Really was. Where do you want your office? <laughs> Where do, do you I get want? The, I've right. definitely got my job then. What a breath of fresh air. <laughs> 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 How is she a breath of fresh air? How is she different from the others? Oh, she's she's um, so vibrant, and she really is passionate and, and cares about the issues. And that's what we need—someone that can can help us deliver the message. But we look forward to having as many allies as possible around the world, and especially allies who have good access to young people who are the future of our world, so that in the long run. We will create more interest and more resources for the programs that we support. So we welcome you very, very much. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I've learned a lot about Chapter Seven. Five nations, and they decide. 
And if it all goes wrong, we call in Chapter 7 with Jerry Halley. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jerry. Bye. 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 So many things you want to be. Oh, wow. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 She's mesmerized right now. <laughs> She's in shock. Shake her hand. Oh. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Yeah? Is that for you? Yes. Oh my god. You're going to look gorgeous in that. You are going to look fantastic. Are you going to a party? Or are you just going to run around in it? Oh god, I wish I... How old are you? Oh, I want to be you now. What are you doing here, Jerry? I love the toys. I love it. I know what it is. I've looked into it psychologically because when I was a little kid, I didn't have too many toys. No. Once I had a, um, I had a doll's house that my dad made, but I didn't really, I didn't have Christmases or birthdays when I was a little child. So not I, at all. No. Why not? Because my mother was a Jehovah witness for a couple of years, and also we were so poor, we just went to jumble sales. So this is like, oh god. You know when I write a letter? Yes. Yeah. How does this work? Do I say, yours sincerely, Jerry Halliwell, ambassador? Hello. Okay, this was a Christmas. How, do, how does it work? Or do I ambassador Jerry? Or, or does it not count? I don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just basically trying to use my fame to bring awareness to a cause that I believe in, and that's what they're doing. So I have my total admiration, respect to them. You're also involved in the fight against breast cancer. Why? Well, don't get excited. They're only from a little magazine. I'm not excited. Oh, they've got the vaccine system. Yeah, okay. Can you sign? Can you sign? Can you sign? Can you sign? No, I just find my whole family, all of them. No, well, I'll read that then from your family. Okay. It's okay. Well, that Did makes it better. better. I think that's yesterday. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Today's sky bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the one, this is the bit. Yeah. You know, me in front of the, at the UN talking. You know what I mean? You've spoken to them No, yes, I've spoken to all of them. I've rung them all. And none of them have seen it. None of them bothered to bloody watch it. You'd think they'd all be rushing around someone's house. Were they more excited when you did music things? No. So it's the same. But they've got their own lives, Jerry. I mean, they. Everyone else is watching, put it that way. He wanted someone back at home, that it wouldn't mean, I mean, just someone back at home that you know, because we're all here, yeah. I suppose if Tor wasn't here, I suppose I would have rung you, the Tor, did you see it? Yeah. But there's no one back at home, it always matters when it's home, just someone, you say, oh, I saw it. Do you think she's a happy person at all? No. Not at the moment. She has happy times, but it was like the other day when she was really excited. She was, because she felt happy and she doesn't normally, she was just oh, so for excited, wasn't she? Mm. At feeling happy and you think, that's, I thought it was really sad that she was, it was such a big deal for her that she felt so happy that she wanted to literally stand up and shout, I'm so happy. <laughs> Would she be happier if she wasn't still trying to keep herself famous, do you think? Yeah, ultimately, 
I think she would because you're not striving for, for something and for constantly, can you imagine checking the papers every morning to make sure everyone's accepting you the way you are and all that? That's hideous, isn't it? I mean, it's nothing worse. You just want to be, you know, you people just, you just should be accepted the way you are. But it's always wanting that kind of recognition. And so, yeah, she'd be happier if she just went and lived on a farm with a husband and two kids and, you know, all that. But it's not going to happen, is it? I suppose people that are happy in their lives normally don't have any ambition to dress up and be a whole different person because they're happy with the way they are. Hello, sweetie. How are you? Something. I like that picture there in the paper the other day. We used that big sign. Is that not? I don't suppose you take glasses off just for one quick peek, then I'll go. No. Thanks, sweetheart. Bye. I'll put through you. This is my brother. Can we say that? <coughs> How are you? Fine. Good you're trip. Right. Yeah, you're right. Did you see any of it? No, I didn't. Did you? Yes, of course. I was there. No, I didn't see any of it. I've, um... Read anything in the paper? No. Even Miss Sky News. I've ordered it all on tape to keep her happy. <laughs> Bit of confusion in the family. Have you had a tea or coffee? Or I love it when I have coffee. Oh, do you think? Do you want to say that? Once you've gone upstairs. Would you say you're prouder? Of course I am proud. No, but prouder of this than... That is wonderful. Is, uh, that is um, how it's planned to you. It's an honor. You know, it's really great. This is wonderful. Honestly. I'm pr I was proud of the Spice Girls, but this is just... This is it. Tell me why it means so much more. I think because, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's nice of her. She, she could actually give, in her position, to give time and love for another people. But she's always been like that since she was a little girl anyway. She has. Yeah, she always have that. When she was in school, we make it. you stop doing portraits of my mother, please? Yeah. Can you stop it? Because she's not being in it. No, I'm not being in it. Hello? See, I don't want to end up looking like a bloody showbiz mother. No, I don't want to be like a showbiz mother. She's not going to be in it. Stop She's interviewing her in She's going to be in it about that much. I know important. I know important. Really, why do you mind your mother talking about you on film? I don't mind her ever doing a little bit, but I would just hate my mother to get famous. Do you know what I mean? Just in a small... I want my mother to remain my mother, thank you. So don't keep on interviewing her. Because it's a waste of your film. But... What about people learning about you? They can have a little snippet of it. You know, they just have to tough as my mother and leave her alone. Jer is finally letting her mother in on the big secret. The 18 room monastery she bought as a Spice Girl, which is being gutted and renovated for her to live in. You see, it's getting clean now, look. Wow, it's looking so much better. Mum. Speechless. Speechless, come on then. It's very big. Very big. <laughs> what Too big. Yes, very big. Very big. <laughs> what are we saying? You're going to look so small inside. You're going to get lost, do you? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is very big. <laughs> Oh, I love that. that looks All lovely. All these windows to clean. That, that green. All these windows to <laughs> clean. Circle. That's beautiful. Oh, these windows they go in. They go, you could turn over. Don't yeah. You? Oh, that's right. Right. This is the long hall. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you look down there, nice long hall. This is all gonna. This is wooden. Woody, and then wooden. it goes into marble there. Oh yeah, marble there. So there'll be a couple of arches there, and then two doors behind that, and you can hang your coats underneath the stairs. Then it's all very, oh. very practical. Yeah, quite good. 
I like this that case. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> A unite dress? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the things you need to give real thought to are like the more principled rooms. I've decided if it all goes wrong, I'll just turn it into an orphanage or something. Yeah. What are you talking? Why are you negative? I'm not negative. Oh, don't be like that. It's lovely. Of course it's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. Well, you look like an orphanage, did I? <laughs> <laughs> she sees my restlessness. My mother can spot that. She came to me in the morning. You know, she said, wake up, Jerry. And I looked at her and I thought, oh, I really do love you, actually. And, um, you know, very, I felt really childish that morning. And, um, and then I had this horrible horror that because I'd just begun to love my father and then he died. And I thought, oh, my God, one day my mother's going to die. Which is kind of... You know, realising that is kind of quite scary. That eventually you will be alone. The Lyceum in the West End, where some of Jerry's fans have discovered she's to sing at a gala performance for Prince Charles's 50th birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your overture on beginner's call. Overture on beginner's please. Thank you. How come you did this? How come you did this? Thank you so much. Oh, please. Oh, thank you so much. Please. Sarah, Benna, Benna. Oh, what did that say? I love you too. I'm. No. I'm what? I'm nervous. Oh. He's really nice. Will you see her? Can you give her my present? You'll see her. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you so much. She's lovely. She's very sincere, she's compassionate, she's fun, she's, oh. she's just lovely, I love her. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> oh, that is so You will nice. give that to her, won't you? Oh. 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 I'm so happy. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my God. She really loves her. Leave her a, a card Even since she left the Spice Girls. Oh. I love her more yeah. now. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I mean, they haven't forgotten her, that's the beauty of it. If anything, they like her even more. How important is this event from your PR point of view? Oh, has this Yes, been how important is this event? It's phenomenally important. It's phenomenally important. It's her first public appearance singing <laughs> since she left the band, first of all. Wait. And she sings Prince Charles. Can it get any better than that? Dress rehearsal. The Nationals are holding pages for, for your shot. You are what's going out. It will be a shot of you in dress, is what's going to be issued Singing tonight. Out. Just nothing else. No other pictures going out tonight. So they're all holding basically for you, for right. this shot. What page are they going to put it on? Um, Thank you. Okay. Hi, you are right. What's going on in there? You wouldn't want to know. You are right. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm definitely going to send you that tape, don't I? Thank you very much. I know you watch it over and over. Of course <laughs> It's funny that my life is just a media circus. You know, I'm just hanging. It's in case someone shoots their big lens as I go to the toilet. Love Jerry! on stage and I was really down sometimes the doors would go back and if there was someone just saying I love it was almost like someone was reading on the days that I would feel down someone would hold a banner up saying I love you you know and some days it wouldn't be there but then on the days when I was down it was so nice I'd really maybe I was looking for it on the days I was down it's so nice that's so nice isn't it um. What I keep trying to touch on is what it is about you that still so wants fame. Because when you talk about it, you know the downsides. The really? loneliness that it's brought you and all that, and yet emotionally you're still completely caught up in it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can't help emotionally reacting to that. Who wouldn't? No, it's why you still... I suppose it's your job. But is that fame, is that fame though, those girls there? Yeah. 
It's about you being famous. What they love is you as a famous person. Oh. Well, no, I suppose it's you as a real person. Yeah, that's why I thought they were just responding to me as a real person, because I'd like Have to you say... met them? No. So they don't know you. This is just a trimming and a bonus. Do you know what I mean? This is the trimming and a bonus. But if I keep on building and, you know, the, the more of a public figure I become, the more use you can do with it. It is good for me to become, you know, more people know me because then when I do my really good stuff that make, you know, like all the breast cancer and the UN stuff, more people can listen. I know the rules. Those are the rules. People have told me that, so it's better that I keep my fame. Hi, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. I was already you know. coming. Yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I just hope this goes. I don't fall over. That's fine. Or am I going to say if I fall over? I don't know. I said you've got to think of something funny. By the way, I might go and choose my doggy on Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. There is in Battersea Dogs Home. What was the name of that one? A Jiu Jitsu? Shih Tzu. A Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. Not a Shih Tzu. That's a massage. Oh. <laughs> a Shih Tzu. Yeah, a Shih Tzu. So, shih tzu. I don't know what you think about it. What do you think about it? I don't know. It? it depends on the dog, doesn't it? You just have to see the temperament of the dog. Yeah. Oh, spread, yeah. spread in the sun oh, with cover flash. Really? Yeah. Centre spread? Don't know if it's centre, but two pages. George is off. You and your bloody centre spread. Oh, sorry, George. Here you go. <laughs> what page no, am I on? What page? That is the title. Yeah. That's the title. What, 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 is, what page am I on? That's the, that's what you should call it. <laughs> you really should. You should catch enough times that you're saying that in the course of the documentary. What page am I on? I don't say that often. <laughs> she said all what the bloody time. Happy birthday, Joel! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Beautiful! Good luck, darling. We'll see you later. Bye. I'll be back. I'm sure you're funny. That's what you I'm not, like. no, no, I'm not I'm supposed to laugh at where no one else is laughing, right? I just, just laugh, remember that. Just laugh, because then they'll follow you. Okay. Yeah. You'll be wonderful. Have a good one, okay? Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch you with your own. I just want to say, have a good one. Well, and you. darling, how sweet of you, and you, go well. I'm sure it would be fantastic. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello. Oh, hi. hi. I just want to say, have a good one. Hmm? Have a good show. Friends oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. And same to you, because uh, I think you're you've got something to do. I've got nothing. I'm oh, yeah. Old. You do. You are a living, breathing icon to my generation. So just go and be proud and fantastic. You don't have to do anything. You are just you. Well, that's very sweet of but you. But it's a pleasure thank to meet you. you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank bye. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, I wish he was my dad. Hi, right. have a good one. Thank you, and you. We're, we're about to start, so then Where's the angel? Angel's on the back of your skirt. We've checked. Right, it's there. Yes. Yeah. We're at the door now. Let's go. Hey! Oh, 
gracias, Manuel. <coughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, your Royal Highness, happy birthday to you. What did you make of that? About what, Jerry's Jerry performance singing. there. Mm. She will see it. There's obviously a throwback to the, the whole Marilyn Monroe thing. Mm. Um, if oh. you, oh. if you, if you, oh. you look at the voice yes. of reason, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. there yeah. uh, Personally, I think, you know what? I feel repulsed. Uh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? All this, you know, as soon as Prince Charles out, she's there with her arm round, isn't she? I think she actually really thinks that she might be in there. Yeah. There you go. Going she's too far with it. Oh, I think so. She's getting ridiculous. <laughs> right, I'm sure, sure Prince well, Charles would. You change your tune. You I said know, she I was know. your favourite Spice Girl the other day. I know, but I, I can do that. <laughs> Today, you just think, I get so warm, so I wish I'd, you know, I wouldn't care what people think. It was such a high last night. And people. But someone said something nasty. Yeah, so. just It was just that Johnny Vaughan. It was the first thing he just. It was really nasty, and it was my. You know, criticise him, tainted it a little bit. You know, who does she think she is? And I just thought, what channel was that on? It was on Channel Four, the Big Breakfast. Actually, Denise, we went. Come on, Johnny. You know, last week you were saying you loved her. Do you know what I mean? And that just says everything. You know, everybody is so fickle. You just do one thing that they don't like, and then they slag you off. So you can never trust them. Do you know what I mean? You can never trust anybody. So maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. That's him as a waiter. That nice. Jerry, that's fabulous. You know what, when I saw her in the thing, I thought it reminds me of the film of The Keen and I. Have you ever seen the film? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Suddenly I thought it was The Keen and I. I might give them out. <laughs> I'm really proud. Do you know what I mean? I ended up, I'm a girl from Watford, that, you know, from very humble background, and I can stand on the front page with Prince Charles and me. I don't give a shit what anyone says. She's an entertainer, she's, super, she's in the start, but... Don't say, I don't like it when you say things oh, like sorry, that. Oh, sorry, I'm a star, because then you sound like a... Superstar, then. No, no, I mean, the opposite, I feel funny you say that, because I don't want you to sound like a... A, you know, like one of these star mothers. No, you know, my daughter's a star. Please don't say that. So what I say? Say what you like, but don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm not very good in the words. Sorry, Mum, I know. I'm, say I'm not very good. Like. I'm sorry. I can't find it's just that I get worried. Oh, no, I get worried. I'm yeah, sorry. But I can find words. I know you. Do you sorry, oh, do I'm you sorry. <laughs> I get worried that you know so you people would me, watch this, like it, like watch this and think, oh, my God. But there's no, no way it's anyone. No, because your mother's always saying, I didn't <laughs> want her to be famous. I know. She's like, I don't want my mum to call me a star. No. Or no. She wants me to call her Jelly. She loves it. She wants to be her. But well, she was last night. Last night she was a little star. She was a star. And I don't feel guilty. But she was a bloody star. I know it's my daughter and I never want her to be a star. But she was a flipping star. <laughs> Also, she was shh in the Oh my god, it's, it's a one way system. Oh my god, it's a one way system. Okay. We could go up and do the next right where it says no right as well. Or I should just go in here. Do you think so? But then I could get really in big trouble though. No, that's all right though, because you're a celebrity. Oh no, my God! <laughs> oh no, I can't do the full turning! Oh my God, <laughs> that's bad. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, oh, no, 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 no
was nervous. I'm telling you, you made me do it. You were prodding me like a fish in a fish tank. You made me do it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh. God. Have you changed, do you think, your reaction to being filmed now to at the beginning? Yeah. How so? This really gets on my nerves. Before I was just desperate of company. <laughs> see, that's what it was, you see. I had no company, so I thought, I'll make you my friend. <laughs> it's all been one fast because I needed a friend. It has, hasn't it? <laughs> You've been fished in by a lonely old person. But do you know what? For that, you said that's happened before. Yes. Isn't that funny? That is quite funny. I was obviously to be replaced. It was time to find a new mate. Why do you want a dog? Please indicate part of how much you think it may cost you to vaccinate your dog. You're basically looking at anything from 25 to 35 pounds. No, I don't know. Yeah, well, you don't, obviously you don't it's not. Okay. It's going to cost you 25 quid. You don't want that. Here's some little monkeys. A bit smelly at the moment. Oh my God, he's gorgeous. <gasps> oh my God, he's lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Hello. How old is he? Is that six oh. months? Oh, if that. very expensive. Oh. oh, he likes me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do that to everyone that comes for it. Can I hold him? Yeah. Oh, he's so sweet. He's not kissing us oh, as much. Oh, you see it's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's he, where's he from? Lovely. This is right. A few sort of like more Yorkies in here. Yorkshire Terriers. This one's really old. It looks really sad, doesn't it? The owner died. Oh, it's a big one. You can get an Sad. The whole thing is sad. <laughs> oh, is that one of the dogs upset? Yes. Yeah. Which the one, one, the little one? Died. Oh, the old one? Yeah, the oh. old one. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's time to move out and to move on. We must not forget about the um, the garden chairs. Oh, no, leave them. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, I go to Ashton, the other house. You're going well. Well, you've done it, Mum. You'll be able to come, won't you? I don't know. I need, I need to have a shot. I'm filthy. What's the point, Mum? Never a bath at my new house. No, I don't want to have a bath in your new house. You can have a shower in my new house. Don't bother going home to have a shower. Yeah, we need to go anyway. Why? Can't you come please, Mum? I'll come and see you. Honest, has Christian got your address? Yes, she has. has. She? I haven't got the telephone number yet. Yeah, I don't know what it is. You don't want to. I'll ring you and tell you. You, you do that. Thank you, you so much. All right. See you there. Been All right. So good protecting me. No. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Oh my god! Beautiful! Well, we'll be putting curtains up for at least three days, but you know, it's a start. Oh, it's lovely! Wow! It's gorgeous! Carry! Oh, 
You haven't seen the dining room yet, have you? And look at this picture that I got. The Last Supper. Oh my God. Oh, that's lovely. My father made me a Cindy Dell's house and it had moving doors and it had stairs. And we spent fifty pounds on furniture, which is a massive you know, which was a massive amount in those days. And I swear this was exactly the same as my Cindy Dell's furniture. My mum might bring it actually. Isn't it sweet? Yes. Do you like it to your taste? No, not that furniture. So it's interesting that you've really gone for that. Oh, I know the grand this. look. I mean, look at that piece of furniture. Man. This is my worst bit. Stop it! Don't look at it. This is probably how ironic. I have to be standing in front of. I've actually labelled this. It's the most, my most Elton John piece of furniture in the house. Oh. Get off it! When I was a little girl, I, was, I wanted to live in a big house because my parents got divorced. And I said, when I bought this big house, my mum would live at one end and my dad would live at the other. And um, anyway, the other day I walked into my to one end of the house down here. My mum's already, she said, oh, I stayed that end. And I could smell my dad. My, my dad's flat always smelled like greasy, like a chip pan. I can smell it in that room. It's really weird. It's like he's going to stay in this room here. And it's really used to pick the kind of oldy woldy. Do you know if I still smell it? Oh, I can't smell it. Wow. Fairy tale. Isn't it? Yeah. Nice fairy tale? Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. This is. There's yeah. a depression room. I told you, I'm not bloody sleeping in this place. Really? It's depressing, isn't it? Look at that. Look like a coffin there. <laughs> like a coffin? That's well, I don't know what it is. It's too, I don't know, creepy. Everyone wants to kind of hide, you know, we all look kind of a crap and want to hide in our own shells and it's a piece of my other things, well, at the end of the day, if it all, if I've got enough money to live on and I can just retreat and just stay at home and just, I've created this little world. Next Saturday, a chance to see Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band in concert. The boss gets rocking at 11.40 here on Channel 4.